welcome to my youtube channel please if you are new on this channel kindly hit the subscribe button and if you're already a subscriber i want to say a big thank you for subscribing may our hearts be open to the peace and joy found in god's grace as we embark on this spiritual journey together please let us know your thoughts in the comment section and kindly comment with love and respect for one another the aim of this channel is to help us hear the word of god and be renewed and transformed through the word of god disclaimer this channel does not encourage violence or the use of abusive language on anyone so kindly filter the words that you use in the comment box thank you for doing so may the peace of god continue to be with you always or people claim that they were called by god oh god flash them but you are saying they did they have not studied so if somebody says god called me mm. to follow him or to serve him does the person still need to undergo a certain training or it is an outright lie that the person was not called by god because one of the things they also add when they tell you those things is who god has god does not qualify Call, um, he doesn't call the qualified. He doesn't call he the qualified. Qualify, qualifies the call. That's one of the things they also hold on. So, so what you have to say. To so the, the 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 point is, there's nobody that is not called. There's no uncalled person. Jesus said, nobody comes to me except I call him. Which means the gospel is the message of God's call. In the book of Romans 8, 29, the Bible tells us, for those he foreknew, he predestinated. Mm. Those he predestinated, he called. Those he called, he justified. Those he justified, he glorified. So there is no uncalled person. Now, when you receive the call, it is called salvation. That's when you are saved. That's when Christ comes into your heart mm. to be domiciled on your inside. Now, once you are saved, you begin to grow in the knowledge of what Christ has called you into. As you grow in that knowledge, out of spiritual growth is where ministry comes. Every child of God, anyone who has received the gospel has a ministry in him. You don't need a special vision. You don't need a special dream. You don't need to be on a mountaintop and hear some angels playing drums. You don't need any of that. Once you are saved by Jesus, the message that saves you makes a messenger of that message out of you. That's why the Great Commission in Matthew 28 is to all believers, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Now, the essence for training therefore becomes, once you are called, remember in Ephesians chapter 4, after Jesus died and rose from the dead, upon his resurrection, he didn't talk about the events of what happened when he died which is what has been very predominant, you know, in past years, mm. where people just die and come out and say, I saw this, I saw that, I mm. saw that. And sometimes all those are childhood fantasies because the truth of the matter is, mm. if you study the Bible very carefully, all the people who died in the Bible and came back, nobody had something to say. Nobody. Mm. Lazarus, four days, he came back, said nothing. Jesus, three days, three nights, he came back, said nothing. Hmm. Paul said he was caught to the third heavens. He saw things that the human mouth is not qualified to utter. So some of these people that are dying and coming back with stories is just childhood fantasy because the, the, the boundary of Christian knowledge, the boundary of God's knowledge is within the written word. What you cannot substantiate from the written word, you trash it because it carries no substance. And that is why we have to stay within the confines of the written scripture. So now when Jesus rose from the dead, he didn't talk about what happened three days, three nights. What did he do? The Bible says he gave gifts to men, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastoring, teachers. Why? For the perfecting of the saints. Why? in view of the work of ministry so that the body of Christ can be edified. So Jesus, upon his resurrection, gave gifts to men. These gifts have a responsibility of equipping breath believers with knowledge, with teaching, with education. You know, in Acts chapter 8, Philip was having a crusade and then suddenly the Lord told him to join the chariot. And he joined the chariot where was a eunuch and the eunuch was reading from Isaiah. And when Philip joined him, Philip asked him, Understandest thou what thou readest? How can you ask an intellectual of their day if he understands what he's reading? Because it's not enough to just read the Bible. There's an understanding that is required. And you will never get that understanding until it is interpreted. 
mm. interpreted is the word is the word is the word expounded in Luke 24 27 Jesus expounded which means if Jesus expounded Moses expounded the prophets which means Moses and the prophets did not speak in literal terms that means their language was coded so Jesus had to expound the word daimenua in the Greek it means he interpreted so which means Moses' words were interpreted by the Christ. <clears throat> and that is why in the book of Acts, all through the chapters, the apostles who learned under Jesus, three and a half years of learning, followed the pattern of Jesus' teaching. So Christianity is historic and apostolic, which means what they handed down to us is what we're supposed to be communicating today. But how can a man understand except someone should guide him? So there are human guides in the school of understanding of the scriptures. That's why you have to be taught. You have to be trained. And the yardstick for knowing if what you're taught is correct or not is Christ. If the message is not Christ, it doesn't matter who is teaching it. He is playing with your intelligence. Some people 